Welcome to Peninsula Beat. I'm Maria Soreo. The City of Rancho Palos Verdes Emergency Preparedness Committee has created a new website. The site allows residents to access information easily so they can be prepared in case of an actual emergency. I sat down with the chair of the committee, Tim Weiner, who tells us more. What we learned, uh, you know, over the years we've collected a lot of information about emergency preparedness and we've been putting it on the Emergency Preparedness Committee webpage and what we learned is that there was a lot of information on there and you kind of had to hunt for it. Uh, it wasn't in an easy, you know, easily accessible format. So that was sort of the genesis of this project. Okay. So what people should do is if you go to the City of Rancho Palos Verdes webpage at palosverdes.com slash RPV, over on the left side under Government, Go to the committee menu and then the emergency preparedness committee menu and you'll see RPV Ready. And this is the new RPV Ready emergency preparedness website. It'll bring you to this page. And from here, you should just click on whatever icon you're most interested in, whatever topic you're most interested in. So for example, if you're interested in learning how to prepare if you have children in the house, if you go over to the children icon and click on that, over on the left side, you're gonna get all kinds of information about what you should do to help prepare your house if you have kids in the house. Um, if you're interested in making an evacuation plan, go down to evacuation, click on evacuation, and it's gonna give you all kinds of information on how to evacuate. Talk about uh, your go bag. If you don't have a go bag, click on go bag, and it's gonna tell you how to make a go bag. So we tried to make this information very accessible, um, very straightforward. One of the other things that's really important for people to do is to join Alert Los Angeles. And over on the right-hand side down at the bottom, if you click on Join Alert LA, it's going to take you to a separate web page. And this is hosted by the County of Los Angeles. And residents of Los Angeles County can come in here and sign up to get reverse 911 notifications. So if there's an event happening in their area, you're going to get a phone call or a text message from the County of Los Angeles alerting you to this incident. So this is a really positive uh, development that we've seen in emergency preparedness over the past few years as the local government's actually pushing information out. City of Rancho Palos Verdes is doing that as well. You can sign up for, uh, from the City of Rancho Palos Verdes, you can sign up for listserv announcements. And the city is very good about pushing out information that's local. With listservs, the city will actually push out information to you so if you want to know about what's going on in the city, if there are emergencies happening in the city, the city's going to get that information to you. You'll also receive updates about when the Emergency Preparedness Committee meetings are and uh, where you can attend those. Those are every third Thursday at 7 p.m. at City Hall generally. But you can sign up for all of these different topics, breaking news, uh, city council agencies, newsletters, so anything you're interested in, just click on what you want and then go down here and hit subscribe and you're going to get that information sent right to you. One of the other things we have on the website is uh, a section that tells you what to do if. So if you're interested in preparing for an earthquake, you click on earthquake. If you want to learn about how to prepare for storms or flooding, we have a top a section on storms and flooding, contagious diseases, we have information about terrorism, evacuation, uh, when there's a power loss, fires, tsunamis, and something that's very important that some people don't even know is a big part of emergency preparedness is shelter in place. The Emergency Preparedness Committee wants to encourage all residents of Rancho Palos Verdes to make a plan, build a kit, and get involved in preparing your house and your community for an emergency. And if you would like more information, you can always go to the website anytime at palosverdes.com rpv. Well, it's that time of year again when we get ready for funnel cake and just plain fun. It's the annual street fair and music festival, and along with old favorites such as the dog show and lots of shopping, there are some new things this year. I sat down with the president and CEO of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce, Eileen Hupp, who tells us more. In addition to all the international offerings, yes. you know, the Chinese, the Greek, of course, the, the hot dogs and hamburgers, the corn, all yes. of those wonderful things. We will also have gourmet pizza, um, mm -hmm. Italian ices. We have a coffee vendor this year, so wow. really fun. But we're very excited. We have a vegan <gasps> offering. Great. So um, for those people who want to follow their vegan wishes, That's we right. can totally do that at the street fair. And then also a New Orleans cuisine with the beignets and oh, pralines and all of that. So, and of course, funnel cake, right, Maria? Yeah. Yeah, we have to have that. That's always delicious. Now let's talk about the music. A lot of people, of course, come out for the music and 
the, you know, the greatest bands that come out, Eileen, mm -hmm. I don't know how you guys pick through those to select them, but they, it's, it's always a winner. Oh, well, thank you. Well, I mean, our yeah. biggest challenge with the music is that it's standing room only. Exactly. I mean, it is packed yes. from morning till evening. Really we are so excited. Of course, our repeat favorites are coming back. Okay. Um, we have something for everything. So there will be, you know, the Steely Dan and the Eagles and, of course, the Beatles tribute band. So okay. really, really fun. We've added um, a new a cappella group, um, Street Corner Renaissance, that you may have heard on the um, NBC Sing Off program. Very nice. So they'll be there on Sunday morning. And Andy and Renee Hard Rain, um, who do a eclectic version of music covering spanning many decades. So it'll be really fun, but you need to get there early to get your seat yes. and be prepared to dance. Okay. Um, we're also going to be offering this year um, a small number of reserved seats for the different musical performances because we've had such demand for people who do not want to miss a certain band. Beignets and funnel cake, I'm all in. The fair is June 7th and 8th and Teen Night will return on Friday, June 6th. For more information, you can go to their website at pvstreetfair.com. Well, it was a night where young people prepared to go to the boardroom at Trump National. The Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce sponsored a Young Entrepreneurs Academy where these future CEOs could learn about what it takes in the corporate world by creating a business of their own. And many people in our community came out in support. I've been passionate about entrepreneurship, philanthropy, and innovation since I was three about. When I was in the YEA, I noticed that all of my friends were asking me about cool, like all of the things I was doing, and I realized that there was a need, so I decided to pursue this idea. The Young Entrepreneurs Academy is an innovative and groundbreaking program that started at the University of Rochester about 10 years ago and has produced over 600 successful student entrepreneurs. They are learning everything. We start with them. It's about a nine-month program. It runs the whole academic year. And we start from helping them generate their business concept and their business idea and then analyze it, take a look at the competition, the strengths and weaknesses of their ideas, so some strategic planning in there. Um, they develop prototypes. They they figure out who their competition is, their target market, um, and then eventually you know, project their costs when they'll break even and what their startup funding will be. So the fun is just beginning tonight, because tonight the students will get their funding for their businesses. In addition, if I might mention, um, we are also part of this nationwide program, and so we will also be selecting tonight, our investor panel will determine the winner of our scholars, um, our Saunders Scholar semifinalist, and we will be sending that business and their parents expenses paid to Dallas, Texas next week to compete in a regional competition. If they prevail there, they go on to Washington, D.C. to America's Small Business Summit, hosted by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce in June. And if they pr win there, they're America's top young entrepreneur. They get a pass onto Shark Tank on network TV and a $30,000 college scholarship. I think the biggest thing that they taught us is like the steps leading up to starting the business, not just like once you have it, it's just leading up and like getting the mindset of like making it good. My idea is a new way for kids everywhere to be educated about entrepreneurship, philanthropy, and fun, out-of-the-box projects. I've learned how to write a business plan, and I've learned a lot about perseverance and going forward and keeping doing it. I think they really want feedback and validation, and I think that they're open to uh, constructive criticism, and I think that they want to hear what we think about their business. They want to learn. Obviously, if they're in a position like this, presenting an idea, they want to hear it from our mouths, what we think, and how they can get better, and what we think about their idea in general. Well, I am creating a website. Um, it's called Vegan Sensation, and basically it's a website that has a giant like, collective range of resources that someone would need in order to sustain a vegan lifestyle. No. It took about two months to put the whole thing together, the presentation, the PowerPoint, and the, um, the written business plan itself. I believe you can never start too young. I think one of the things that our schools lack actually is teaching kids the basics of business. We are a capitalist system. Um, we need to set the, the, the basics and, and teach them uh, everything from balancing a checkbook or how you raise money or the fundamentals of a business plan and things along those lines. I've learned so much in this program and I'm so thankful for the YEA. Even Mr. Trump himself sent a video of encouragement to these young entrepreneurs 
Just goes to show you, you're never too young to get ready for The Apprentice. For more information on the Young Entrepreneurs Academy, you can go to the Chamber's website at palsfordyschamber.com. And when we come back, see why this Clipper Spirit Dance member is giving back to our community, and why are these RPV officials flocking to the Palos Verdes Interpretive Center? Don't go away, we'll be right back. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Because kids in foster care don't need perfection. They need you. Hi, I'm Deputy Chris Knox. I'm here to remind you of the importance of sharing the road. If you are driving, watch out for motorcycles. They can be hard to see. When you ride a motorcycle, always make sure to wear full reinforced safety gear, including a jacket, long jeans, boots, gloves, and a DOT approved helmet. There are four components to a DOT compliant motorcycle helmet. A DOT sticker, a metal D-ring clasp, an inch of padding, and a manufacturer's label. If you need more information regarding motorcycle safety gear, make sure to check out your local motorcycle dealer or the Motorcycle Safety Foundation. When we follow these rules, we can all share the roads safely. This message is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes and the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Community members flocked to the Palos Verdes Interpretive Center to catch up with hundreds of goats who were busy clearing dry brush. The goats are a part of the city's fuel modification project. Liz Brown Swanson joins us with the latest on the project and the goats. Hi Maria, I'm at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center for the city's annual Meet the Goats. Yes, there are 300 goats here and lots of residents have showed up to have fun feeding these four-legged critters and learning all there is to know about goats. Right now we're letting people into the fence to feed the goats and uh, it's basically a public family gathering where we all have fun and just you know, have be entertained by the goats. I think it's great. I'm just, I'm so happy to see so many people here. It was a much larger turnout than I expected, but a uh, fun event, kids running around, feeding the goats. And this is one of my favorite events. Uh, we actually expanded it from one hour to two hours because it's so popular. And all the families get to come by and just enjoy the hardworking goats. Goats have a very important job. Uh, they have to clear up the vegetation that would otherwise be hazardous in terms of fire. So basically they're weed abaters that are driven by nature. <laughs> it is very, very important. As we all know, um, wildfires are one of the biggest issues in Southern California, probably next to earthquakes. So uh, we use this herd every year to go around and trim all that vegetation out uh, to keep homes and uh, lives safe. It was interesting because when we were first approached uh, about the idea of using goats for weed abatement, there was a lot of skepticism about it, about if it would be effective. We really had to convince the resource agencies that it wouldn't harm the environment. But but now I think everybody has seen it work and has completely embraced it. This is one of many events that happens at PVIC. Yeah, we have a lot of great things coming up. The best way to get the information is to go to the city's website, which is www.palosverdes.com slash rpv. What have you enjoyed most about being around all these goats? What have you, what have you thought about all this? It's really fun to watch because some people, you hear them a little bit timid, like, they're going to grab the grass and they're like, we'll just say you're getting it for a kid. But the thing is, both adults and children have a fun day here. So it's really for everybody. And that's kind of like the enjoyment of it for me. I really like meeting the goats. What have you thought of this? I don't know. I just, I like coming here and I like farms. So this is great to see the goats. What did you think of the goats? I think that they were cute because there were babies there too. I learned that it takes, uh, 350 goats to clear one acre of weeds in, in one day. That's exciting. Both male and female goats have beards and we'll leave it at that. Uh, all mammals can drink goat's milk and, and people who are lactose intolerant can drink goat's milk. Uh, and interestingly enough, goats were, were man's best friend prior to dogs being man's best friend. So it goes way, way back. So the goats do us a great service. Uh, you know, cost efficient way of, of taking care of uh, fuel modification and weed abatement in very difficult locations in the, the hills and the, the valleys and, you know, big open spaces like here down here at PVIC. Now before we say goodbye to the goats, I'm here with the mayor's daughter, Anna Dehovic, who's having too much fun feeding. What do you think of all this? Um, there's a lot of goats, so sort of overwhelming. So you've got your alfalfa, should we, uh, should we give them something more to eat because they, they're still hungry? 
Sure. Okay, you go find a goat to feed, and we're going to say send it back to Maria in the studio. You want to say back to you, Maria? Back to you, Maria. <laughs> The Meet the Goats event was co-sponsored by the city of Rancho Palos Verdes and the Fire Grazers. This was the third year the event was hosted at the Palos Verdes Interpretive Center. And you don't have to be a senior to attend the monthly lecture series that's a part of the Peninsula Seniors. We caught up with Jessica McKay who tells us more. Did you know that the Peninsula Seniors lecture series is not just for seniors? Let's go talk to Leanne to find out more. Uh, the Peninsula Seniors Lectures are every Wednesday morning, 10.30 a.m., Fred Hess Park on Hawthorne Boulevard in Rancho Palos Verdes, and they're here to serve the community. Okay, and about how long do they last? Um, do they cost anything? What, what are the information people need to know? Uh, they need to know that the lectures are free. Uh, they can, or, but they don't have to be members of the Peninsula Seniors. In fact, they don't even have to be seniors and they don't actually have to uh, live on the peninsula. If you're you know, within driving distance and it's comfortable and convenient for you to come here, um, you know, we encourage it. So anyone from anywhere can come to any of these series that they might be interested in? That's exactly right, and we have seen even some children in the audience um, on, on a couple of lectures, uh, just very interesting speakers that actually even drew a, a child audience. Well, speaking of those speakers, who are some of the more not some of the notable speakers that you've had here recently? Uh, we had Gwen Shotwell, the president of SpaceX. We had Bob Eckert, the retired uh, chairman and CEO of Mattel. We had Ed Storty. He's a, a world-renowned uh, addiction expert and interventionist and a book author. And we've had um, several others that are, there's just too many to even mention. Where can people go to find out more information about the lecture series? Uh, the best place to go for the most up-to-date information is on Facebook. We have a page entitled Peninsula Seniors Lecture Group, and that's the best place to go for the most up-to-date information. Jean, can you tell us about how long you've been coming to the Peninsula seri uh, Senior Lecture Series? About 30 years. Wow, and what, how did you get started? My wife was a volunteer here when it first started, and after I retired, I, of course, attended practically every week. How many lecture series have the two of you attended? Here, twice. What is it that you like about the series? You like to see what's going on around here and uh, see what, uh, what, what new things we can learn about uh, our surrounding area. How often do you attend these lecture series? Every chance I get. These free, these are wonderful programs. What do you like about them? Uh, I like the, some of the things that we've seen here one of the programs. Uh, who was it? Oh, I was Maureen Nunn was here. I think you probably saw her. She did a wonderful talk about Pat Nixon. You remember that one? Yeah. And then there was a dance. Uh, who was it? Oh, Liz Cantine. She did uh, a tap dancing routine. Uh -huh. Did you see that one? I did not no. see that one. Oh, those, those are really good. And uh, who else? And then it, it, last week we had a very good talk by um, about uh, smartphones. Mm -hmm. So what, what more can you ask? And remember, the Peninsula Seniors Lecture Series is every Wednesday at 10.30 at Hess Park. Back to you in the studio, Maria. And for more information on the Peninsula Seniors, you can go to their website at pvseniors.org. And when we come back, the Clippers season might be over, but the Clippers spirit lives on at Peninsula High School. And if you have a sweet Hi there, I'm Dee Dee Daniels, and I've been a personal trainer for almost three decades. Please join me on Peninsula Fitness, a 30-minute daily workout to get yourself moving. Sometimes we're seated, sometimes not, sometimes we're calm and relaxed, and sometimes the workout is high energy. Be sure to tune in every day to see what we're up to. All the workouts are safe and effective, and best of all, I can be your personal trainer right in your home. Not only do you work out with me, but sometimes my colleagues join us in the studio and we do a specialty workout, like Christine here who's taking me through some kickboxing moves. Don't worry, that kick was not part of the show. So join me, Dee Dee Daniels, every day on Peninsula Fitness, and let's get moving. I'll see you soon.
It's time for sports. Now, when Peninsula High cheer coach Loretta Avilar decided to choose an assistant for her cheer squad, she thought one of her former students might just have the right touch. Prior to coaching, Loretta danced for the Los Angeles Clipper Spirit dance team, and her assistant Candace dances for the Spirit now. Together, they inspire their students to go all the way. Candace has always been a go-getter. Ever since she was a freshman, she was always had her hands in different things. She was in Girl Scouts. She did was heavily involved in her church, ASB, um, cheerleading. She she was everywhere. Like she was the girl that was everywhere at in high school. So I knew she would go far in whatever she chose to do. I was hoping she'd be do professional and dance and stuff like that. So anytime she'd call and say, I think I'm doing this, I'm like, okay, good luck. And I would just kind of remind her, okay, don't forget to do this or do that or whatever. So what, what does it mean to you to see her come back and give back to the younger the younger girls? I think it's great. I think um, I think if you have a talent and you're able to um, share it with people, I think that's number one. That's just you're giving back. You're you're giving it not only a piece of you to somebody else, but um, enriching their life too. And I think she definitely does that. Mm -hmm. And um, she comes in here always with a smile on her face, and she's very warm with the girls and very open um, and listens to them. And I think they appreciate that and um, look forward to like seeing her. I want to give back to younger students because someone gave back to me. My coach Loretta um, was also on Clippers when she was my coach and she gave back to us and she taught us a lot about what it is to be a performer and what it is to be able to engage the crowd and do it with excellence and be able to know how to dance well <laughs> the whole time. Um, so it was one of those things where I felt it just made sense that I would be able to share what I've learned. She was making a dance for Clipper tryout okay. so she had told us so we all just kind of were really excited when she had told us that she had like cheered for the Clippers and also now is choreographing for them. It's really inspiring and really impressive and it really motivates me to pursue their careers and it's really cool to know that the people teaching us like have the real experience. When you look at some of these girls and you look in their eyes and you watch what they're doing, do you see yourself? I totally do. It's so weird. Sometimes you're like, oh, I totally did that in sophomore year. Oh, that was me as a freshman, <laughs> you know. But, um, and that kind of, it's helpful because it also helps me to be able to teach them better. If you want to do something different, like go into professional, you've got to own everything. Like you have to perform everything. It's not just about a move. It's about setting a tone of your dance and really feeling it and having that performance level from start to finish and even from entrance to exit. Like it's all kind of entwined in everything. For me, it's a privilege to be able to have learned from her and to be able to teach um, under her as well. Um, and right now I'm just, you know, volunteering and helping her and just helping her with whatever she might need um, in my free time. And so. What kind of questions do the kids ask you? Um, so do you talk to the players? Do you do, like, you know, they do some kind of funny stuff like that. And some of them are actually Clipper fans too. And so um, I get to hang out with them and, you know, share stats. And <laughs> I think it's the motivation. I think when they see what they're doing, they think, oh, I can do that too. You know, be it at um, continuing at the high school level or at the college level. A lot of these girls aspire to be on uh, pep teams at the college level or even to perhaps be a Clipper girl or a Laker girl. <laughs> And a big congratulations to the Clipper Spirit. You did a great job, and we'll look forward to seeing you next season. Now, more than five years ago, a Rancho Palos Verdes woman came up with a sweet idea to start a group. Liz Brown Swanson caught up with a group called the Tartlets. Hi, Maria. We're about to step inside the home of Peninsula resident Robin Kiss, where she's there with her group called the Tartlets. This group started six years ago by an RPV resident. The idea was to get women together to share desserts and stories. So you are the Tartlets, so it started about dessert. Desserts. It was all about desserts. So we decided to have 12 people meet every other month and two people be in charge that's six times a year and the people in charge would make desserts and each person would make like two desserts and we would have a tasting and most of the people didn't know each other so people got to know each other get to know them and then try the different desserts uh, our theme were stiletto heels cindy and i both love shoes 
and everything for the day is based upon our love and is inspired by our shoes. We have shoe candies, we have shoe lollipops, we have shoe and handbag purses, uh, we have high heel and purse cupcakes, uh, we have a uh, stiletto high heel cake that is the centerpiece. What you see on the table today is what you see on every table for each experience in Tartlets. And it's never a competition, it's just, just a joyous opportunity to be creative. And everybody is, just appreciates it in a way that makes you feel so good about taking the time. Everything is homemade, but sometimes, for example, with uh, the cupcakes that have the uh, sugar, the red sugar on it, that's from a cake mix. So we do take some shortcuts, but everything is always handmade. Everyone gets a recipe book when they leave. Yes, they do. And we try to make it something that doesn't take 10 hours, 42 ingredients in it. We try to make it something that you could go home and make for your friends and family. Describe what we have right here before us, what you put together, this Robin. An ice cream cone cupcake that's made with a cupcake recipe for children. Because so many of the members of our group have grandchildren, I thought it would be fun to use some children-friendly recipes that they themselves can do with their grandchildren. And then the red cupcakes? The red cupcakes, uh, those are uh, red velvet, and they're just coated with a red uh, icing and dipped in red sugar. We did a combination of not only just sweet cupcakes, we did savory cupcakes as well. So these are a salmon cupcake. And uh, they have creme fraiche, salmon, chives, uh, and so just a little appetizer. The people who are hosting it today are at the top, okay? So nobody can ever do what they do. But I think people have learned over time different ways that people approach things. And there really isn't any competition, you know, to try to outdo each other. You just appreciate whatever clever ideas, you know, different people have. Now that was one dessert table that was hard to walk away from. The good news is I got all the recipes. And if you are interested in finding out all the tasty treats that Tartlets made today, you can email me at lizb at rpv.com. Back to you, Maria. Well, Liz, you sure know how to sweeten up an episode of Peninsula Beat. That will do it for us. From everyone here at RPV-TV, make it a great day.